Instructors in trade, material handling and safety tell us that if you tie a knot on a rope, it weakens it by 50%. In this video, I'll explain why and how using a chunk of foam, a tape measure and a wood clamp. First things first, terminology. The word weaken would suggest some kind of permanency or some kind of damage that this knot might be damaging the rope or some such thing, but that's not the case. So instead of the word weaken, I want to use different words. A knot reduces the rope's lifting capacity or rated capacity or safe workload or working load limit. Okay? That's not the same as weakening it because there's no actual damage done to the rope. Now this will apply to ropes, uh, harnesses, lanyard, uh, a wire rope, nylon rope, you know, these kind of things used in material handling, safety, rescue, towing, uh, rock climbing, you know, wherever these kind of things are used. So what actually happens with these knots and the reduction of, of, the, uh, of the rope's rated capacity or lifting capacity, this is how it works. Once you untie, okay, once you untie the knot, the full 100% of its rated capacity is available to you. Where you tie a knot, you don't weaken it, you don't weaken the rope, because you have of the full 100% of the rope or the materials rated capacity available to you above the knot. Below the knot, you only have 50% of the rated capacity available to you and my explanation is coming up in just a minute and then if you tie a second knot here then uh, these percentages don't add in a straight fashion so so now that you have two knots on it the rope strength doesn't reduce to zero it doesn't become worthless because 50% and 50% is 100% but that's not how the numbers work okay don't go there no no again 100% of its rated capacity is available to you above the first knot below the second knot 50% of its safe workload and below the second knot 50% of 50% in other words 25% of its rated capacity is available to you and the pattern continues if you have a third knot tied on it the uh, it's uh, it, it's not weakened by 150 percent all of a sudden no 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 below this below this third knot only 50 percent of 50 percent of 50 percent of its rated capacity is available to you okay so there's always gonna be an ever smaller and smaller fraction or amount of of its uh, safe workload remaining it's not gonna be becoming if you have four knots its strength is not gonna be reduced into negative 100 percent that's that's nonsensical so I hope this one makes sense this way and uh, how the reduction of its rated capacity comes about I'm gonna demonstrate with this foam here why not cause this weakening or reduction on this length of foam here I marked with a grid pattern here on the midsection of the foam an 8 inch long section these grids are 1 inch by 1 inch because the centimeters are way too small and uh, you just work with the number 8 so at rest the material is 8 inches in length in the middle here we can check it with this ever handy paper tape and if I put the zero there you can see that there we have 8 inches at the end of this marked section so 8 inches at rest now how materials fail in terms of material science is this the material is at rest and its full safe working load is available to you if I place a tensile force on it and pull it, tension means pulling. And this foam is a 
stuffy one, but you can see that the midsection and the whole thing actually elongates, and you can see the distortion of the square grid pattern in the middle as I apply this force. The more force I apply, the more elongation the material has. That's what I wrote up here on the board here. I'll just reframe it. I, 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 I know there is a sunny strip in there, but it will make it work. So I wrote safe workload, SWL, or working load limit at rest. So that's as is. If I place a tensile force on it, or tension on it, also known as stress, either one of these will be good search terms for you for um, further study and look into things. So if you place a stress or a tensile force on the load, the material's response is elongation, or also known as strain. And the more force I place on it, the more elongation the material will respond to this tensile stress, and it's gonna elongate, but this elongation doesn't go on forever. It's gonna get longer and longer and narrower and narrower, and at one point it breaks and snaps. So, that's what I wrote here. It fails or breaks. And there's gonna be a finite length that corresponds to this, to this failure. For example, in case of this foam, it might be the case that I'm not sure about this particular foam and, and the uh, characteristics of this particular piece of foam, but say uh, foams, how about another color? Foams would typically hang, have an elongation at break of 100%. Some might have 150, some foams are more brittle, some foams have more give and more rubbery. So let's go with a 100% elongation at break. So that means that this midsection, that's 8 inches now, I would need to stretch it out to be 16 inches long and in the meanwhile it's, the grids distort to be longer and thinner and thinner and then it breaks. 16 inches long from 8 inches. There's your 100% elongation. Other materials, I wrote nylon and steel there nylon from which web slings and uh, harnesses, some lanyards are made, also have an elongation and break of about 40%. Steel, particularly carbon steel, low carbon steel from which uh, wire ropes are made of, you know, in strands of this wire, also have a typical 40% elongation and break which is, uh, it could be 35%, but in that magnitude by and large, okay? Just work with the concept here. Uh, cast iron, typically, I wrote cast iron there, you can barely read it with this light. Uh, cast iron is very brittle, but it will elongate under strain or a tensile force. It will elongate about 2%. And this glass top, will also elongate. Glass is extremely brittle material. It will still elongate less than half a percent okay, before it breaks. But it will elongate. So this failure doesn't just happen. It's part of a process. Let me work with this process a little bit. And we're going to get to the knots in a sec. With the paper tape I can show you that Tying a knot starts with bending the material. So let's bend this material to a 90 degree corner. On this knot here you can see that the material here is also bent. Well this one is a 180. If you look at say this length of material from here to here, it's a 100 degree. So let's start with just a 90 degree turn here. What happens with just a 90 degree turn is that you can see the square grid deforming on this foam. Particularly here in the middle you can see that the one inch by one inch square grid distorted that this one stays one inch in this direction for all of these squares but the squares are squished together or compressed in this direction. So that means that the foam cells inside the foam had to get closer to each other they respond to this compressive force by actually moving closer and there is 
on the inside here there is no elongation there is compression and that compression is measurable it's 8 inches at rest and when I just bend the foam and put the tape measure on it it's zero is lined up there and just give me a sec here there we have it there's the tape and it's four inches now so the inside compressed from eight inches to four inches it has a compression rate of fifty percent now that fifty percent has nothing to do with uh, reducing the lifting capacity by fifty percent I'm just showing you that uh, these numbers are measurable let's measure elongation let's get back to elongation here and let's put it on the outside because whatever happens on the inside you know there's an equal and opposite reaction somewhere elsewhere in the material something's got to give if this one compressed that one has to stretch so let's measure that stretch and let's start at zero there and go to the end of the line there how about nine and a half inches we'll go with nine and a half okay so that means that the outside of the material for this 90 degree band that's not a knot that's just the start of a knot okay just 90 degrees it got an extra say it was nine and a half so that's uh, an extra inch and a half so I'm gonna write plus 1.5 inches there it got a hundred and not a not hundred it got 1.5 inches longer so let's make that into a percentage and this is how you do that 1.5 divided by the original length that was 8 inches and then I didn't multiply it by 100 but just move the decimal the two spots over so that's 18.75 percent and I'm gonna write down 19 okay I just round it up to a approximately equal to 19 percent of elongation now if this foam fails at an elongation of a hundred percent if a 90 degree band not a knot just a 90 degree band elongates it by 19 percent so that means that 19 okay it's close enough to 20 okay so 20 over 100 is about one fifth is about one fifth or or, or 20 percent on its way to breaking or failing okay and that's with just a 90 degree band if I made it into a knot I can't tie a knot with this foam so I just roll it into a ball like this and just pretend this is a knot it's gonna be kinda close enough to simulate a knot let me just work with this clamp here so there's my simulated knot where the material is greatly stretched out and uh, they're probably the greatest stretch let me just give it a twist to okay there there we go so probably the greatest stretch is along the outside here along this line and if I measured along that line see what length we have starting from zero here there is zero and going around there we've got a ten and a half inch length oops ten and a, ten and a half inch along the outside here uh, let's measure again oh no 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 it's 11 inches look at that it's 11 inches along the outside there in the line of greatest elongation so that means that it got 9 10 11 an extra 3 inches longer along the outside and that 3 inches in terms of percentage is 3 divided by the original length it's 37 37 and a half percent longer so approximately 37 percent longer and that's tying it into a knot just like so that's just a knot itself so without placing load on the rope which would make the knot even tighter 
and which would make the elongation along the outside of the material even more extreme you can see where it's going if it fails at 34 uh, at 100 percent this 37 percent is approximately a third of 100 this foam in a knot is a third of its way down to failing so that's why on a knot the outside of the rope here there we go the outside of the rope here is uh, not close to failure but closer to failure than the inside of the rope which is doing very fine things don't fail in compression along the inside bend things fail in tension along the outside bend and uh, if you were to watch a test video on this one when uh, actual uh, stress is placed on it and it's being pulled in a machine you would see that the uh, say in case of a wire rope the wire strands that are along the outside of the band those fail first and as they are woven together they start popping along the outside and they become hairy like so and they pop along the outside here because the knot itself already elongates this length of the material okay ah, I hope it makes sense to you so that there is an elongation and this pre-stressed condition of the material where the knot occurs that's without placing a load on it and of course if you place a load on it vertical or any kind then it's gonna be much closer to failure along these bends here and the tighter the bends the closer it is gonna be to actual structural failure so that's why the 50% weakening or 50% reduction of lifting capacity this is how it looks like on nylon and steel the now I'm not suggesting with this foam example that you climbing on ropes that are made of foam or glass or cast iron no no we're focusing on this one nylon and steel but do notice that the nylon and steel whatever happens to nylon and steel it's not an isolated incident it's part of a bigger picture that happens to all materials that's why all of these are search terms for further study so if the nylon and steel elongates by 20 percent along the outside here that 20 percent is half of the 40 percent that's where the 50 percent reduction in rated capacity is the 50 percent is not in this column is not in this column the 50 percent is between that number and that number in the same material along the same line so 20 percent is 50 percent of the 40 percent okay I hope this makes sense and uh, so that's why the knots and that's how the knots any kind of knot because any knot involves bending the rope around in some kind of a loop any kind of knot reduces the rated capacity of steel and nylon materials by by 50 percent because they can easily produce an elongation along the outside bends of 20 percent okay so that's how that works I hope this makes sense to you and um, if you have a question just type it up drop me a line and we can have a chat